All right, welcome back to this 12 and 12 series, and today we're on course number 11. We're playing Plumas Lake Golf Course in Olivehurst, California. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we're getting kind of down to the end of it, and as you can see behind me, we're kind of in the fall and winter conditions now, a little bit foggy and misty. And, uh, I'm sure some people have already put up their golf clubs for the year, but I'm pretty hardcore. I play year-round out there. So let me know, have you put up your clubs yet? And hey, Florida golfer is excluded. We know you guys play year round. <laughs> All right, well, we'll take you along. Uh, I'm sure the conditions will be a little wet and soggy. Um, we'll play lift clean in place. I'm sure the greens will be a little slow with some dew on it this morning. Maybe this fog will burn off and uh, we'll get some good, some good conditions later in the round. Remember to stay tuned to the end. I'll give my course review of this course and let you know how the round went. All right. Let's get to it. Thank you. Hole number one here is a pretty straightforward but lengthy par four coming in 409 yards. Hit my tee shot here just a little bit up the right side and uh, finding out with these conditions that the ball just wasn't flying. Still left with a three wood here and come up short with that. All right. Well, I don't normally like to do this, but got no warm up because uh, right when I got here, they told me I could go. And I've said it before, just for filming purposes, if I ever have an opportunity to just get out and play by myself on, during a round while I'm filming, I'll take that opportunity because it just makes it easier. Less hassle, not worrying about getting in someone else's way. So, no warm up swings wet conditions it wasn't like I was gonna get the speed of the greens down on the putting green or find my swing on the range anyway so we'll see it's come back and hurt me in the past by doing this but we'll see we'll have fun it's winter golf what can you expect we would came up a little short a little short-sighted myself here we're just gonna try to hit a 60 degree get it to flop up and land soft see what happens A little frustrated there because the ball stayed on top of the ridge and left me with a pretty difficult downhill putt and I just ended up blowing this one by the hole. Wasn't able to make the comeback or either. Now the second, second hole here I had to fade it around these trees. Kind of drop kicked my drive a little bit but it ended up in the middle of the fairway. So, uh, kind of as expected, struggling out of the gate with no warm up, but well, no excuses. Let's go. Again, with the damp conditions, I just wasn't getting the carry with my clubs here. So, taking enough club, hitting a three wood, you can see just how much mud I pick up on the club there. Hit right there. Went down this ridge. Under the green here. We have this look for, for birdie. And the good thing is, there's been people before me that have that have made some putts, kind of show me the line in the dew. Even with being able to see those lines in the dew, still wasn't able to get this putt up high enough, come up short, but I am able to make the par putt. First par three of the day, 160 yards, end up flaring my tee shot well to the right here. Just got a wedge in hand and this happens. Probably fortunate that it hit the flag stick. Don't know where it would have ended up, but we do have a look at it here for par. And just able to minimize the damage. That was always going to be a bogey after that tee shot, but man, it would have been nice if that ball would have dropped straight down after hitting the flag. Hole four is a dog leg left, and I'm trying to take an aggressive line and cut the corner over the tree. Mine was perfect. I just hit it right into the tree. Didn't have the height. I hit the tree and bounced into the middle of the fairway. So that's a lucky break. But probably still a good ways back. We'll see. Looks like there's a couple 
really big bunkers guarding this green. A big high face on both of them. Definitely don't want to be in that. Hit that one a little thin, but actually landed short of the green and rolled up, even on wet conditions. I like how this course has these T mark or these uh, yardage markers on the trees. That's pretty cool. See the condition of these bunkers here. Looks more like dirt than sand, but looks like they're playable. Oh, the ball did end up just off off on the fringe there. Debated between putter and wedge and ended up choosing the wedge. Came up pretty close. We got a look at par here and we're able to convert. All right, another par. On to hole number five. First par five on the front nine. Hit a pretty decent drive here. It just kind of leaked off the right side a little bit. And uh, still a long way back and just hitting the three wood, trying to get up there as far as possible. Caught a little heavy right in the middle. Left with just a wedge in here on my third shot and absolutely pull one well to the left. A little bit long down in this hole. So I'm just scrambling once again. Get up onto the green with my wedge and give myself a look for about eight, nine feet for a par and we're able to drain it. That was a pretty decent up and down from down here. I didn't even see where the ball landed. I'll take it, another par. Just hitting three wood off the tee here. On number six, you do have the driving range down the right side and there is a ditch that runs through the middle of the fairway. Left with just an eight iron, make good contact here and put one on the green. Yeah, that's a pretty decent shot in here. Hit right there, ends up just basically pin high. Let's make a birdie putt, come on. Got a good look at birdie here. And once again, just really confused by how quick the greens were with the moisture on it. End up missing the birdie putt and missed the par putt as well. Tapping in for a bogey. I got no words for that. Tee shot here on number seven was a little bit of a thinned draw, but did come up short and left of the green, but right exactly pin high and nearly make the putt here for birdie tapping in for a par hole number eight is a little slight dog leg left you can get aggressive and go up the left side but i put this one right down the middle right down the middle that one felt good this was another shot where made good contact but was just struggling with my distances in the damp conditions and i did come up a little bit short of the green and just scrambling once again with my wedge to get up and down for a par. Left myself about eight foot here for a par and we're able to hammer one home. Kind of hammered that one home, but that's another par. Tee shot here on number nine. You really have to try to split these two trees right down the middle of the fairway here. Got it over the trees, but it went a little more right than I wanted. But we're in play, we're good. At 133 right there. Just hit a easy nine iron. Put it right on the green. Let's make a birdie. Well, these are the situations where I really need to take advantage of it. I mean, I rely on my short game a lot. So I'm usually scrambling just to make par. So when I get on the green in regulation, these are the times I need to make those putts. So let's see if we can make a birdie putt here. My impression so far of this course though, I'll probably have to come back when the conditions aren't so wet, but I mean, even with the conditions the way they are, the greens are, are still pretty decent. I like them, they're rolling true. You know, the fairways are soggy and muddy, but we'll have to come back and give this course a, another try. Cause I do like it, it's beautiful out here. No, no houses around. And uh, right now, pace of play, I'm out here playing by myself. And, well, 
I just got a nice little surprise. My ball must have rolled off the green and, yep, yeah, it went long. So scratch that whole birdie putt. Now we got to do what I always do, scramble just to make par. How about we chip one in right here? Well, like I was saying, just grind, grind out a par. Short game, up and down. Man, I gotta work on getting on these greens in regulation. I feel like I could two putt from just about anywhere for par, but I like to make it hard on myself and have to get up and down with my wedge. All right, making the turn. Hopefully the back nine's a little better. I have to look at the score, but I think we're just uh, four over at this point, so not terrible. Hole 10 is a slight dog leg right. It has a ditch that runs all down the right hand side. Another one I make a decent drive right down the middle here. Yeah, I've hit a few balls right today, so I was a little nervous that I was gonna push it off the right, go down into here. But we put one right in the middle of the fairway. I don't know what we have left into this par five, but maybe we have a chance of getting on it too. Let's see. There is a tree down the left hand side that kind of overhangs the fairway and another big tree that guards the front of the green. Hopefully it got far enough past that tree that I have an angle to the green. Not left with much of an angle here, and I really couldn't go over the tree. Tried to punch one up low and let it run up onto the green, but it didn't quite make it. So I'm just, once again, scrambling with the wedge and a putter. And uh, burning edges. Really mm. thought I made this putt. Oh, man, that was rough. Thought I made that putt. Oh, well. First bogey for a while, so we'll take it. Just kind of some of the conditions, you know, chipping on over here. Pretty muddy. No grass. So, can't get any check out of the ball. Oh well, no excuses. Winter golf. Even though I'm making excuses. He shot here on number 11. Kind of starts up the left hand side and peels right back into the fairway. Well, I was hitting a draw there for a while, but last few rounds haven't haven't been able to find it. Uh, so my fade has come back a little bit. Need to get back into getting that draw swing. I'm losing a lot of distance with this fade. So, got 144, another big deep bunker in front, guarding the green. Uh, probably could get there with a nine iron, but I don't want to come up short in that bunker. I haven't had to play out of any of these bunkers yet, so I don't know how playable they are, but I'm just going to hit an eight iron, make sure I get over that bunker. Just talking about that draw and that was a little bit more of a draw right there and I think I pretty much smashed that thing long and left. It did go long and such is the theme of this round where once again just scrambling with a wedge and a putter and making another good putt here. Yeah, another grind out par there. Another good up and down. Man, making it tough on myself. Hole number 12 here is kind of a tight little fairway, and I end up pushing this one well out to the right. In fact, it ends up on the fairway of hole 15, and I'm just trying to get over these trees and back into play. Actually put this one on to the green, but I'm a long way away, so I've got a long two putt here. Just trying to get it close, leave myself another chance to grind out a par, and make a really good putt, and denied by the lip. After that brutal bogey, step up to 13 and put one way right of the green here. Just hitting a 60 degree wedge here, trying to avoid all the limbs. Come up a little bit short. Once again, scrambling now just for a bogey. 
And uh, we put this one close enough that we can just use the wedge to tap in here for a bogey. Move on to hole 14. Hole 14 does have a little bit of trouble, a little bit of OB to the left. Uh, end up pushing my drive out a little bit more right than I want, kind of blocked out from this tree. Tried to fade it around, but stayed straight. My ball is down there. I'm going to set the camera up over here so you can see the landing area, but you won't be able to see me. There's a big ridge right here. I'll put the camera up here on top of the ridge. So I'm down here, well below the green, got a wedge in hand, trying to use the backstop to my advantage. Carry it just a touch too far, but I do get a little bit of rollback. A little too much contact, but got a little piece of the ridge and rolled out to right here. Got about a eight footer for, for par here. Played way too much break. Coming off three bogeys in a row and we're stepping up to a par five. This is where we really need to get one of those strokes back. Hit my drive right down the right hand side in the fairway. Got a three wood from there and put it to a great position to just have a wedge in hand from here. And once again, yank one. All right, let's see if we can grind out another par. See if we can get up and down with the 60. Make good contact with the wedge here get it to land softly give ourselves about eight feet to save another par but we just never get it on the correct line tapping in for four bogeys in a row just playing too much break now over reading the green that was a fairly straightforward putt i should have made par 3 16th is guarded by a couple large deep bunkers on the left and right hand side and I do come up a little bit short of one of those bunkers. Use my wedge from here and it kind of catches the back side of one of those bunkers. And rolls out to about six, seven feet and we're able to grind another par. All right. All right, another grind them out par. Those are, those are round savers right there. So that stopped the streak of four bogeys in a row and we step up to a fairly short par four here and hit a good drive right down the right hand side. Once again, have just a wedge left. Another cold iron shot, but we are on the green. Have a long look at a birdie. Let's make at least one birdie. We got two holes left. This one and 18, so it'd be nice to get at least one birdie out here. So we have an outside chance of birdie here, but it is a long putt, still wet greens. But we're able to get it to just a couple feet and tap in for a par. Hole 18 is a very sharp dog leg left and driver is not the play here. So I 100% blocked myself out here. Got trees everywhere. I'm just gonna have to punch something up low and let it run up there. Short of the green. Grind for another par. Came out a little hot, but it was a good shot. That was really all I could do from under the trees. And uh, just using a wedge here, trying to get up and down once again for a par. And we're able to do just that. Well, that was the theme of this round. Grinding for par. Nice to end it right there. All right, that's gonna do it out here at Plumas Lake Golf Club. Uh, ended up shooting a nine over 80. Didn't realize that if I had made a birdie on that last hole, I would have shot under 80. So a par 71 course, but I shot four over on the front, five over on the back. Uh, my impressions of the course, I mean, it has a lot of good. It's, it's really pretty scenery out here. A lot of beautiful trees and everything. And there's not a lot of houses. There's a few here and there kind of scattered on the back nine. There's a couple, but they never really truly come into play. So uh, the bunkers, I never, got in a bunker today but pretty much every single hole out here has like the cookie cutter two bunkers that guard the front of the green with a really steep lip um, the sand in it was more like really fine dirt 
It looked like it would be playable, but I, I never was in one today to test it out. Fairways were muddy and kind of sparse. Um, I don't know what it looks like in uh, summertime or springtime when, when it's not so wet and foggy out here and rainy. Uh, but the greens, I was impressed with the greens even with them being wet. They really seemed to uh, roll true. They were a lot quicker than I was expecting for them to be so much moisture on on the greens. They, they actually still rolled pretty quickly. Um, I imagine when they're dry and firm, they're probably lightning fast. There wasn't a whole lot of rough out here. Um, it's not a whole lot of hazards. There's no water on the course that I saw. There is a couple ditches here or there. Looks like maybe when it's raining there is some water in the creeks, but outside of lakes or ponds or anything like that, I didn't see any on the course. And there's a couple spots where you can lose a ball, you know, into an orchard or something like that. For the most part, it's a pretty forgiving course uh, if you're offline. There is a lot of trees, but uh, I didn't lose a ball. I don't think that uh, there's too many opportunities where you can, so. Uh, I did enjoy the course though, and, and the clubhouse and, and the whole property out here seems pretty nice. I didn't get a chance to, to test out the driving range, but it looks like it's just a mat driving range. Um, I just kind of got here and went straight to the course so, so I could film by myself, and that was nice. I had the whole round to myself and enjoyed it. So thanks for watching this course number 11. We got one more course to do, not sure where I'm going to go with that yet. I've got a big uh, trip down to Southern California planned where I'm actually playing uh, three new courses. But I don't know if I'm going to incorporate that in my 12 and 12 or not. Or if it's just going to be its own content. I'm going down there to golf with some fellow YouTubers, so that's going to be a fun trip. So stay tuned for all that. If you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you know when new content comes out. Especially that uh, content coming out later this year with some fellow YouTubers. Should be some good stuff. Appreciate it. Catch you on the next one.